Okay, here we go to the studio. So, I want to break this up into three sections kind of deal. Um, I'm going to go over pretty much real quick what's in here. I'll go over the acoustic treatment. I'll go over my gear in routing. And then I'm going to go over some workflow with you guys. So when you first come in, you'll notice, and you're like, hey, that's not musical stuff. Okay, I also do airbrush work. And I don't know if I'm going to leave this in this room permanently, but for now it lives in here. So I have this unfinished painting I need to finish. I have my toolbox down there with all my paint supplies and stuff in there. Some more paint supplies down there. Uh, vinyl cutter if I need to cut stencils or do anything like that That's the light usually for that area All right, so sound deadening um, sound treatment Was a game changer for me to be honest with you When I started putting the sound treatment in here it made working so much faster and able to mix way better and one of my goals as far as this studio goes is to be mixing and mastering for people plan on investing a lot more money into that aspect of the studio so we have these form corner traps and then we have this back wall foam trap I know foam is not the best but this is a good again there's on the bottoms centimeters to give you guys an idea what we're looking at for the thickness on this about six uh, about closer to seven centimeters so I mean it works keeps the echoes down at least back here on the front we are totally treated um, again we have just done these rock wall panels so these are rock wall the panels are this is 15 centimeters ruler, so it's thicker than 15 centimeters. And then the gap is almost exactly the same, so it's supposed to double up the efficiency of these things. The corner traps that I put in there, they have to foam down there to take care of the three-way corners to keep base from building up there. But those are closer to... 12 inches and 12 inches is around 30 centimeters thick I also have down here some more rock wool that's working as a base trap so those are the full bats I just cut the plastic off them because I was using that when I did up here too so I have the top so again my whatever you start doing this kind of stuff you want to attack your first Reflection points first and you can take a mirror running along the wall or whatever And wherever you can see your monitors from your listening position is where you're aiming for Again, I have Equilateral triangle set up for my listening position. I've measured the room And I've tried to get my listening position in the perfect spot of the room I have a measurement mic that I've been doing measurements as I've been doing all this stuff and creating waterfall graphs and pretty much attacking the acoustics in here the best I can. Again, any studio, home studio is going to be, unless you're building it from the ground up in a perfect environment, you're, you're going to have compromises. So I'm working my best around these compromises to make things work better. So let's go through equipment next. So here we're going to start in a sampling section. When you come over here, we got records on the bottom down here. It's right next to the mixer. We got a screen that's a duplicate of one of the screens over in the main PC style area over there. Um, for a record player, I have a Newmark TT two direct drive turntable it has some cool features like it has the quartz it'll do 10 or 20 percent on the thing um of course the pop-up light you know standard features 30 45 75 reverse forward you know 
and this right here comes out and it goes into the Octatrack. It's on this crossfade, so I can. This is kind of hard with your elbow. Again, you guys get the idea. So again, that right there goes into the Octatrack for sampling duty. Um, the MC707 is over here. This I usually use as more of a synth, so it's more of a sound engine. Sometimes I'll use the drums on it, and sometimes I'll use uh, drum pads as like one shots. Uh, I have a keyboard here that's Bluetooth that goes over and connects to the main computer. That way I can also sample using Groove Agent and then the actual machine software on. But this is the Machine Plus that I have over here. Really good for, for sampling on new and chopping up samples. Works really well. So if you go into like sampling, it's real easy to work with. Or if you go in, so again, really intuitive, easy to use this box. This is fun for experimental stuff, or the sequencer on it's really good also. Um, if you're sequencing other equipment, it's really good for that. Because you can press MIDI and then you have eight different sequencers, eight different channels, or eight tracks of sequencers also that come with it. Again, a lot like how the um, Digitat does. This all has the Cubase shortcut keyboard keys on there and a little thumb like. Has the. Where's my mouse? Which screen are you on? Oop, I must have found it. So. So again, so this way I can bring stuff up over here and I can control the mouse without having a big mouse in my way over here because there's kind of, again, real estate's at a premium over here. I may get another one of these to put down there. That way I can get this mixer off the floor. But that right there is the sampling section of my studio. All right, next let's go over the synth area, just a rack synth area. So over here we have a onstage rack from Sweetwater I bought. Some storage down here, set of drums, uh, crate. So let's start at the top, we'll start right here. So again, we got a mono synth. I use this a lot for basses, things like that. Um, I love this thing. It's great. It's a uh, sequential pro three the mod matrix You pick the source and then the destination and it also has a third so it has two analog oscillators and a third wavetable oscillator It's it's really good. It has built-in sequencer. I don't really sequence stuff with onboard sequencers because I'll go into that a little bit later That's the awesome tune feedback. So you can get really gritty with it.
again pretty awesome synth uh, I like it a lot this is what I consider to be my mono synth like my whole idea was I wanted a really good mono synth and that's the one I went with and it was a toss up between this and the uh, the Moog there the one everybody else has is the 37 Next down here we have the JDXA. JDXA is an awesome synth. Uh, it's definitely very cool. So it's four part analog. So you can have four different parts. So it's multi timbral. And that's just on the analog. And each analog part has two oscillators and a noise if you want. So you could add a pink noise. So let's see. If we were here. So again, the way this JDXA works is the part you want to work on, you press the part above it. And that changes all the controls over to that part. So you could actually be playing a part. And then just something else if you really wanted. But. So the red part says what your keyboard's controlling. Or, and then the blue says what the board is. It has also four. These are again like mono parts. You can poly stack them. Which means like if I press poly stack now. It's all number one. But I can do up to four key chords on the analog part. The digital part, on the other hand, so the digital part of this synth has three partials for each one. So let's just go. So we have digital part one. So we turn on the blue so that way this is all that. And then for the oscillator, if you go to variation, then you can pick which one, what you want it to be. And then you can do up to three different parts for each digital one. So three different sounds, three different envelopes, stuff like that. It's an amazing sound design tool. I love doing pads on the digital part because, again, you have three different parts. And then you can use your amp envelope So, and the LFOs. So it has and stuff. So I love it. It's great synth. Been good to me. It was the first real synth I got when I came back into music. Um something I think it was 2000 December 2017 or 18 that I bought this man time flies then below that we have FM so that was my that's a hybrid my first stepping back in that's my mono now I have an FM synth down here so this takes care of all FM duties as far as hardware is concerned um, really good sounding synth um, it's my newest one I haven't messed with it overly yet I know that I can import samples and play samples on it too it has drums built into it it literally has the same engine as the montage in it so awesome synth sounds great I really need to dive into that one more that's my newest one so I do not know this synth like I wish I did up here we have the Peak. So Novation Peak, awesome synth also. Again, it's a digital 8 voice. Great synth, has good sounds. I like it. This I ended up buying. This was my second like real synth I bought. I, and I was 
it was funny because I didn't know no better and know stuff about synths, so I got it. I was really disappointed because I was expecting something more like a JDXA, something that was multi timbral because I didn't understand those terms at the point. So I thought voices and timbrality were the same thing, and oh man. But it's a good synth, it has good sounds to it. You can, it has wavetables, and you can upload your own wavetables into it. That's what really, that was the other thing I really liked about it. The fact that it had the wavetable aspect of it. And you could upload whatever wavetable you want using the app on the PC. Drums. So right here I have the TR-8S. I love this box for drums. I like to call it the quick and dirty box. Because if you want, like right now it's going. So I go to bass and get a four on the floor instantly especially when you're just producing you always want to do something quick so again high hand clap so it's so quick and dirty claps not only that it's easy to experiment with really hands-on I'd prefer to use this any day than a lot of the stuff in the DAW and, and it's really easy to move stuff over. Um, again, I've also don't so much sequence this thing. I'll use the sequencer on this one. Sometimes, depending on what I'm doing. But a lot of times, I'm also sequencing that from something else. And down here, we have our acid boxes. I have a regular TD3 back here. And I have an XOX box also now the Zox box here this one's modified so it has an extra oscillator um, it's got the res boost cut off low bunch of different stuff and man I, I really like that box to be honest with you I have a love hate relationship with it it's more of a tuning thing if you look at where I have to have the master tuning to even have it right so I don't know all right oh might as well seeing we're over in this area so down here we got our all our extra audio cables all our extra MIDI cables and all our extra USB cables for synths and I guess we might as well toss this into my son Squire I keep it down here because you can hook it up to the effects. Now let's go over to the main desk. Over on the main desk. Again, we got our Cali monitors up here. We have a 42 inch super wide LG monitor and another monitor. These are both on stands, so that way if you're working standing up, you can just lift them up and have them in a good working position so you can like lift everything up and move it and it's adjustable or if you're sitting in your chair and you're just working in the DAW you can again lower everything right back down that was part of the vision I saw when I built here we have the access virus TI2 and this is my digital monster I mean this synth is amazing super powerful so many sounds. I love this synth. Really good. Again, I really like making trance music too. So it's kind of no brainer that I have that. Right here we have the Squark Pyramid. This sequencer right here, I'm going to be getting rid of for I don't know how much. I It's hard for me to even get rid of it because I know it so well and it's such a nice box. So I really even haven't like totally took steps to totally get rid of it. Um, jaw controller. Again, I got an X-Touch one, which is really nice. Has the, let's see. As far as DAWs go, I am in Cubase. So the X-Touch one, what I really like about it is if I go to like the mix console and I start going to banks. Or something like that. It has the automatic faders. Again, you got the controls here on the door. So 
So let's see if we go here for bank. So this is his problem. It's Mackie controller. So again, you can jump over to your. I don't want to be a machine. So let's say I'm over here on like this, and then it has the automatic fader. So. Let's go, yeah, here you'll see it over here. So again, it adjusts automatically motorized faders. Um, the Akai MPV 232. I think this is gonna end up getting replaced. I don't think I'm gonna keep this one around for long. I bought it with the original idea that this would be my master pad controller. But I really like the machine and stuff. Now that I've figured out how to integrate it very well with the DAW. I've shared this information with a few people. A few videos. Where I'm able. Because that was a lot of people's biggest complaint. Is the DAW integration with Machina. When you leave the Machina environment. But it very, does integrate very well. It takes a little bit of setup. But once it's set up it works really good in the DAW. Up here we have... An RNC 1773. This one is doing side chain, so. So it's side chaining my base. Um, I'll go into routing in a little while. We have another RNC 1773. A lot of times I'll use that on the master. On this side over here, I have an effects processor, the GT Pro. This thing is awesome, multi-effects. Right now, the XOX box is going into it. Um, and down here, we have the Circlon. Right here. So this is the Circlon. Let's see, where's the XOX? There's the XOX. This thing's awesome. I love the X, the Circlon. This is what is replaced this. This thing was complete awesomeness. This is even better. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff with it. So, supposing, again, it's set up song scene, track, pattern. So, let's say. Here's my pattern that I have for the XOX box. The tracks, so these are all different tracks. So let's just say I want to just, and whichever one's lit is the track you're on. And this is also a track selection. So if I choose this one, whatever instrument it is will play or I have control over so like let's say Pro 3 so I'll right now it says Pro 3 mm -hmm. now my MIDI controller which is the SL88 Grand down here is playing the Pro 3 or if I switch it over to the peak which is the top buttons now I'm playing the peak Okay, but like over here now, so now we're back on the XOX, and so let's press play. Oh, I forgot I put some stuff in here. So here, so now I can use this this way, so if I'm on tracks here, you see only the one where I have the XOX is on. So I know I have my drums right here. So now that'll trigger my drum parts. I have two basses right here. So now I can just trigger them that way. Turn them off or turn them on. Which is beautiful. I love that workflow. Let me turn this off and back on because I don't want anything saved there. 
And then we have this bad boy, which is the Mio XL. The Mio XL, if you have a lot of synths or you have a lot of stuff in your setup, this is a godsend. Um, I use this to control all my minis. So I have MIDI going out of here. So I have USB MIDI going into this and these other MIDIs going into that too. And then that also has outputs to all my different instruments, whether through USB or through 5-pin. I'll go into routing more. That's going to be in the next session. We have the X-Touch Mini. Again, I use this in my portable setup too. So I unplug this along with this hard drive, which has all my, all my projects on it. So that way I can switch between my laptop setup which I bring to work and I work during my lunches and my breaks and I use this also because again it has the eight tops so if I want to use knobs and then I have program controls so I have a button just to switch between mono and not I have I can add an FX channel I can add an audio track so it's FX track Audio track, instrument track, reverse audio, uh, render settings, render in place, um, metrodome to my left locator. So if that's the beginning of my loop or whatever, again, loop function stop. All your basic controls are in there too, which is awesome. Okay, the mixer. This was a game changer really was I don't know how many times I've told people you know if you have hardware and you're using a lot of stuff and you got a lot of inputs this is really the way to go right now I have 40 crazy amount of inputs into this all my instruments have their own channels so again Mackie Pro 3 and they're linked and they have their own faders so like this is the PC I have PC channels that come out to this too so again, because they're linked, you know, and they're automatic faders, so now if I jump over to A, everything switches to where it's set at. And the other thing, man, when you really think about it, everyone's like, oh, the price, the price, okay. So I don't need a patch bay. See these different mixes? All these different mixes go out to different stuff. They either go out to effects or they go out into my sampling instruments. So I can have anything go out to 14 different stereo mix outs. Beautiful, right? That's great. I don't 14 outs. Boom. Like that. Uh, and that's expandable. The ins and outs by getting stage boxes. And again, each one of these, like any other mixer. So over here you got, again, you have your gate. You got your choice if you need 48. So we're on the mic. So again, we have phantom power to it. So you got your gain, your trim. You have a gate built in. You got a compression. So I guess DBX is the compressor that they do. The equalizer, which is awesome. Equalizer works great. That's the other thing I'll show you guys too. The delay. So I don't have son sonar works, which a lot of people have. But what I did do in my studio is I took the mix. So if we go to and we select my main here, and then we go to the EQ. Where's my EQ button? I've created an EQ. Now that you have a Q, where's the, sorry. So there's my EQ for the low, and there's my EQ for the high, for the main out. So this is my main EQ, all this red area. And I've sat here and pretty much flat curved it using um, REW, which is Room EQ Wizard and a measurement mic 
So that way, no matter what I'm playing, what instrument, I have a corrected sound coming out of my monitors. And the beautiful part is, is like I said, everything has its own deal. So let me get out of EQ. Let's say like, let's go to our, so I have MC707, so let's see, I have the MC707, whereas A is my separate, my assignable out, and then I have my regular MC707. So let's go MC707. Again, so I can go to the inputs, and then it tells me in here, I can choose, again, for my direct out, because this all goes, every single line in here goes to its own channel in the DAW, audio-wise. So again, the direct out is, again, the USB card into the DAW. Down here, you have a choice, so you can have a pre-din, post-EQ, post-fade. You can choose how you want it for each mix. So again, whichever mix you have going where, you can pick where you want the signal to come from. I can have this do processing on my synths before it goes into the DAW, or I can have it just go in raw into the DAW and record it too. Beautiful. Other thing is, is again, like 14. So 14, output number 14 goes to the side chain right there. So again, right now I have the JDXA because I have a bass part on it going into the side chain. And I also have the Pro 3. And there, right there, that's all I have to do. Now all of a sudden I'm sending those things there. Now if I get out of the mix, let's see. If you notice I have the JDXA shut off here because I don't want any sound going there. It's all going through that compressor. Or I can go like this and bring it up, and now I have, I'm mixing it. So I'm doing what a lot of people are doing in the software with hardware too. So the hybrid workflow is crazy. Um, a lot has to do with this, this thing right here. So again, this, the Mio XL, does not need the computer to operate. So if you're running just hardware like Mark Gardner is on one of his setups, that'll work without it. So if I come down here and I want to jam out with all my equipment, I don't need to turn my computer on if I don't want to. So let's go in to this. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over to OBS now. So that way I can go over the Oracle stuff and what it's like in the computer for that Mio XL. Okay, here we are. So back to the Mio XL. Again, we have RTP MIDI up here. That's how we set it up. RTP MIDI is a network MIDI. So it's MIDI that runs through that network cable like your internet does so let's go ahead and we'll look at the software here for the Mio XL so here's the Mio XL software pops it up uh, there's your RTP and network MIDI to set up that part of it um, once you set up one it's real easy to set up it seems a little thing at first uh, you have USB host reservation this shows all the different stuff that you can have saved for immediate use into here so if I click on this it tells me all the stuff that I could possibly put in there and then it will over here I can have all the stuff that I want to go wherever I want so again let's go ahead and again it says all these things are connected now the Circlon is beautiful it has five different five pin midis out and in and it also has USB, and on the USB side, it has, I think, crazy six ports of USB. 
So that's a lot of channels of MIDI that you can do. That's why that thing is so great. And it also does CV and gate. Um, I don't have that set up because I don't have modular, but I plan on expanding it down the road. Now, if we go in here, here's the best also. So you have your MIDI routing. So this is where this thing shines the greatest. So here you have your source. So let's go ahead and say circle on these are five, this five pin MIDI side. So that's why it's under DIN. So I have the circle on here. Now the circle on one only sends signal to the Octatrack, the GT Pro and the, the JDXA. And the main reason why is again, you have 16 channels of MIDI. The JDXA takes eight channels of MIDI because each one of those parts on the JDXA can be controlled by a separate MIDI number one through six, one through eight is I think how I have it programmed. You can change it, but it's still eight channels of MIDI, one for each part. Uh, same with the Octa track, you can control all eight of the tracks. So I can control the Octa track through the circle on this way or from the DAW even this way. So over here's your RTP network MIDI and all this will show up in your DAW. I will show you that in a little while, how that works. So originally I had to Squarp the same way. So Squarp has had two 5-pin MIDI outs, one 5-pin MIDI in and CV and USB MIDI. But So again, here's all the USB hosted stuff here. So like Circlon USB and Circlon USB 2. So forwards, I have two going to the Virus TI because that's 16-part multi-timbral synth. So you can have 16 different voices or 16 different sounds playing at once on that if you really wanted. Uh, you might run out of voices pretty quick if you did that, though. I'm not sure. I've never really had to ever do that. Uh, same down here. So I have this one USB goes to the machine, the Pro 3 and the Mod 6. Um, again, so you have that. And then on top of that, you also have your filters. So you have your input and your output filters for each device. So I, so like I don't want my TR8S to send MIDI. I want it to receive MIDI on channel 16 only. So I have all this stuff is blocked for all the other channels. So there's no chance of something funny happening because of that. It's only the channel that I have open for it to receive notes and control and program changes is the only thing open. That way I don't have to worry about it doing something I can have. I can program it to receive from the Circlon. I can program it to change the pattern it's on, the sounds, the kit. I can have it do whatever I want it to do right from the Circlon the, whenever I want. And I was able to do that with the Pyramid too. Pyramid's super powerful, really good bang for the buck. Um, I think the Circlon's just as more powerful and it has a few different advantages. Um, that's that's topic for a different time. So again, like the Octatrack, I have on 9 through 16, so those channels are open. The rest is all blocked. If you didn't want to send a start-stop messages, to a certain instrument, you can block that also. So there's another powerful part about it, which makes it so that way. Again, you know, how many channels of MIDI do I have? And I'm not using the onboard sequencers on any of them because I'd prefer to know the Circlon really well and I know a sequencer really well. And then I can play it through my MIDI keyboard, which I love. I mean, it's an 88 piano key and I like playing it it's, and I'm used to it. So I can control everything from my desk that's around me. Or I can just play it on the instrument at the same time. Because again, you have input and you have output filters. So like the fires, I wonder why I have that on like that. So the output on 16. Okay. 
not sure why. I'll have to look into that. But same for the TR8S. So I don't want the TR8S to send. So I want the output of the TR8S to accept everything on channel 16. And the input, I don't want to send anything. And I had issues with this because, again, I would go into my DAW. And then all of a sudden when it says all MIDI, it would start getting all the MIDI messages from everything that's allowed to go to it. In fact, I'm probably going to set up a, to actually show you guys one way I can, no, I don't have enough room to do it. I was going to say, if I had enough room on my USB, which if I change one of these over to a five pin MIDI, I would. Again, there's other ways, like I have everything to it, each and every one port. Um, when it comes to some of the five pin stuff, you can daisy chain it like you do with normal setups too. Um, but like I could take this port too and then I can go into my MIDI routing. So I have my USB here. So again, it goes into the RTP MIDI. So this goes right into the DAW. And so let's go ahead and let's go into our DAW and we'll show you what's up. So I have two DAWs. I have Ableton Live 11 and I have Cubase 12. Um, the Live 11 I do not use. I used that for a long time. The beautiful part about Ableton Live 11 is you can slave Ableton Live's clock. So you could, I could have the Circlon. If I press play on the Circlon, it would start Ableton play inside the door which that was awesome I wish Cubase did that and it doesn't um, so let's go into Cubase here I'll bring up a project real quick and then I'll show you how that integrates in there and some of my workflow a lot of times there's been a big huge question on workflow with me so okay recent project so here's my Clownfest X set backup no I don't want the backup do you want to delete this project? No, I'll keep the backup. And again, all this stuff is here on this drive along with my contact libraries and also my other um, stuff. Let's see. Any, any, All my sample libraries are on that too. That way everything's in one spot. And I also program my laptop and my PC to read that drive. It's the same letter. So it keeps everything saying okay this is this so when I save it, it it swaps between the two computers seamlessly six hours later and survey says there we go so here we go here's the dog we got this project clown fest here Again, I made this into a sample, actually, and put it into the OctaTrack, this whole intro. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just look at this intro for an instance. So whenever I work in a DAW, the first thing I'd like to say is I have one track here, which is for reference. I have my group tracks down here in a folder. Those would be my stems. And then I have a summing track that I use for gain staging. So on my summing track, as you look, usually this is set at 6 dB. And the reason why I set my summing track at 6 dB is because at the end, when you're ready to master, you remove that 6 dB and that gives you 6 dB of headroom for doing your master. So that is always that. And I prefer to use the summing track anyways. Again, now I have one, everything's color coded the way I work. I try to keep things organized. I have the kick drums red. My drums are lighter red. Um, vocals, stuff like that, sub bass, and so on. So let's see. Let's go, so supposing I wanna use 
with one of my hardware instruments from the DAW. Again, I have machine also set up down here. So I have the machine environment has its own little setup. So it'll record like normal MIDI and play back like normal MIDI also. But in here, so let's see, we have, here's an acid line. Let's do that. Let's play with the acid line. So I do have a shortcut right here built into this. We'll put our, if I put it on channel 13, which is its MIDI channel. Now I have the sound coming right from TD3. Now I can mix it with the other. So now I have a hybrid work. the audio track into our base and we will call this the TD3 and now that I have a TD3 here we can go ahead and we'll put it in that folder and we'll solo this and then up here let's add it to no bus so then I have all these buses here so the TD3 goes into the Mackie, so we'll have the Mackie come in here. And now the Mackie's coming in, as you can hear, Mackie's really loud. I have a gate on my mixer, but it has a lot of background noise to it. But as you can see, it comes in. Supposing I don't even want the Mackie. Supposing I want to grab a part from my other synth that I have. So supposing I want to record the Pro 3 in here. And then I have the Pro 3 part that I made on the Circlon. So I could go ahead and I could do it that way too. So I could come over to here and turn on my Pro 3 part. <laughs> And I could also have it be triggered through the DAW. So you can go into here. Or let's say that I want, let's do something even more fun. Let's go ahead and let's take our FOSCON and have this here. I can set this to have the Circlon USB 2 in and I set it up for channel 16. So if I just wanted to write an acid pattern using a circlon, I can do that now. So let me press play on this and I'm gonna just put in a quick acid pattern. I'll only make it one bar for simplicity.
want such a hybrid flow. If I want to write on this, I can write on this. I can run this. If I want to use this in a live stand with a laptop and have that as an instrument, I can. Um, I can also use my MIDI keyboard now. Use it too. So, like, here's another idea. Again, I can run my MIDI keyboard easily in here too. But supposing I'm doing a live set for Clown Fest. I'm like, oh man, I could use another sound. So now I'm jamming out. Now I have the Fosca. It's part of my live set right now. Now it's not playing, so I can have So there's a bunch of different reasons why you'd want that. But that's a pretty simple overview of why I'm doing it in the way that I work. Um, but most of the time, I'm playing right in the DAW. Again, before it was all hardware until recently. Now I prefer... A lot of times to just be in the door and you know just working in here. Uh, let me shut off all the mutes. Again, in here, a lot of this stuff's easier to use in the box. But I like having a hybrid, and I love bringing my hardware since into the box, and I like writing outside of the box and then bringing it in also. Again, it works like a MIDI controller to do that. And you can record it right in there just through the MIDI. So, again, I could have a MIDI channel and then have the MIDI out go to the instrument if I want from that MIDI channel. Alright, I hope this was inspiring to you guys. I hope you guys got a lot from it. Um, remember, keep making music, everyone. Peace out.